Allison for Leading Edge Dog Show Academy, and this is part of our equipment series. Today, we are going to talk about chalk. All right, so you might think that chalk is that white stuff that your teacher like wrote the algebra question on the board at school in, and that would be true. But there are many, many kinds of different chalks, and today I'm going to talk you through kind of like the most common ones you might find at a dog show. So we are going to start over here with loose white chalk. So this is the most common kind of chalk you are going to see at a dog show. So by loose, we mean it's loose like a powder, but it's chalky. And there's many, many different kinds. Now, yes, some people use chalk to enhance the whites of their dog. And some people use it to enhance the texture of their dog's coats. And some people do it for both reasons, right? So one of the other things that you could use loose chalk for is you could use it for putting on your dog to get a little bit more grip while you are stripping out their coat. That's another good use for loose white chalk. However, that's not really what we're talking about today. That would be more under like a stripping lesson, but definitely that is one of the ways you could use loose white chalk. Okay, so, but for the rest of us, we're gonna use it to put in maybe usually our dog's legs. So terriers, double-coated breeds, smooth-coated breeds, we might put it in the legs to build a bit of bone, build a bit of substance, add some texture into that coat. The same with smooth-coated dogs, we're adding a little bit of bulk to that coat. And we have some tutorials on how to do that properly. But for me, I'm going to use, do it with a chalk um, that's the whitest possible because while I'm doing one job, I might as well let the product do two. So kind of the difference between these two chalks, the Lannies, this one's a little bit coarser. I would use this one for mainly stripping or texturizing, and I would use this one for texturizing and color. Now, how do I like to do it? I like to keep it in some kind of reusable Tupperware type container that has a lid on it, just easier to use than out of this tub. Um, I'll even keep my chalk brush in it. So typically my chalk brush is like a bristle brush that's just gonna help scoop that chalk and get it to where I need it to go. And you might wonder why I have this baby powder here. Well, I like to cut my chalk for this application of building bone, building substance, building body and whitening, not necessarily for stripping, with a little bit of baby powder. My favorite uh, baby powder is the one that has baby powder with cornstarch. I don't like just cornstarch. Baby powder with cornstarch is kind of my sweet spot. And you know what? Super basic. I'm going to start out at a 50-50 ratio, right? 50% chalk and 50% baby powder. So if it's a little bit drier out, I'm in a dry environment, it's in the summer, there's not a lot of humidity, I might go up to 40% baby powder and 60% chalk. I find that that just holds a little bit, lasts a little bit longer, gives me a little bit more bone and substance. On the flip side of that, if it's rainy, super humid out, maybe it's in the winter, I'm gonna go 60% baby powder and 40% chalk because I find the cornstarch and the baby powder kind of soaks in some of that humidity. My dog's legs don't get that white kind of pasty look to them. But regardless, I'm gonna do some kind of ratio of baby powder, typically baby powder with cornstarch and my chalk together in a tub. You know, I'll even chalk up their foot on the lid or on a piece of paper and put it back in this tub. And then I am ready to go. So moving on from that, we have some other chalks um, or chalk substitutes that we might use. We have this brown sugar um, powder. So this has more the consistency of a, of a baby powder, right? So more of that talky consistency and it's not white. And we might like to use this on dogs where we're still trying to get that bone and that substance into them, but it's on that brown color. Clearly this isn't going to match the brown. It's gonna be a lot closer than white. And then you might have to add in some other kind of color, right? So that's how we're gonna kind of use these loose chalks. As well, another place that you might use loose chalk, maybe you're not doing legs, maybe you just have a little bit of head detail you need to work on. So we have a loose chalk that's in like a smaller container. And if I'm gonna use this chalk, I'm gonna be using it like as kind of makeup to enhance or make my dog's face look more symmetrical. And typically before I do that, I might put some white paste on there. Maybe I might use a white Chris stick. So this stick isn't technically chalk, but I typically will use this with chalk. You get this wet, put it 
where the white is or where you want it to look white and then add your baby powder. And when I'm using this kind of smaller chalk, I'm typically gonna use uh, some kind of smaller applicator brush or a old toothbrush or a cheap toothbrush, whatever it might be to help me apply this kind of chalk. So the Chris sticks, so these sticks that are creamy in texture and some of these loose chalks in these small pots come in different colors. Now here is where it gets a little bit tricky, right? Like these colors other than white and black, the browns aren't going to necessarily match the same brown as your dog, right? Whether it's in this stick form or whether it's in this loose chalk form. So another thing I like to do is I will go to the women's makeup section and I will pick up some like kind of loose foundation. And the reason that I do this is that even an extensive line of dog chalk or a face is going to maybe have six different brands, right? Like that's an extensive line where women's makeup, they are going to have like 80 shades. A lot of these have 80 shades um, and they are fairly inexpensive. It's easier to mix and get your custom shade if you are using this. Now I'm not gonna use this for building texture. I'm only gonna use this like basically for face detail or to maybe cover up a blemish on another dog. So this is another reason why you might use some kind of loose chalk Typically when we're using loose chalk, we're using it with some kind of cream underneath it um, when we're doing like kind of a face makeup kind of tutorial. All right, so I'm gonna move on to our last kind of chalks and these are super popular as well. And these are called block chalks, right? Obviously, because it looks like a block, right? So um, typically they come in some kind of square container. These are really, really great for smooth coated dogs. You want one that kind of goes on quite creamily on, you don't wanna have to really rub it hard to get it on there. Um, they are for pinpoint accuracy, right? Somewhere where we're just covering up very, very short, fine hair that we don't want to use a loose chalk um, to get it, like a brush to get it on with loose chalk. We want kind of that pinpoint accuracy. We're really just kind of massaging it into that skin. This is also better for covering up skin, like if there is a bald spot. And again, they come in many, many different colors, obviously black and white being the most popular. Um, so they are a great thing. They also have different shades of browns, etc., that you can also use um, that to just enhance, cover up blemishes, cover up bald spots on your smooth coated dogs, etc. So there is lots of different chalks, lots of different ways to apply. Some people will apply with cream. Um, another good tip is if you are using a black chalk, you can take some black chalk. You can like put it on your dog's skin. And if you take a product um, and you, so there you can see it. And if we take some hairspray, we're just gonna set it with some hair stay, give it um, a second or two to dry. And then when we rub it, it's not going to come off on our hand, right? It's going to like stay where we put it. So give it a second or two to dry. And then when you go to rub it, you're not gonna have it come off on your hand. So I think that this is a, um, a really good way to use chalk to understand the different ways that we are going to use them, starting with our loose chalks that we use on legs, bigger areas. Think of the things that come in bigger containers would go on the bigger areas of your dog, the body for texture, the legs for bone texture color, maybe a rough on a shelter or collie for the same thing for that texture. And then the smaller chalks that come in smaller quantities are typically because we're using them on smaller places, i.e. on faces or small blemishes that your dog may have. So when it comes to chalk, I hope that this helped you figure out what you need to, to use and where you would apply each product. Hi guys. Thanks for joining us on another video in our equipment series. Like we said, there is a lot of equipment here that we need to cover. So if we haven't yet hit the piece of equipment that you're yearning to learn about, let us know in the comments below and we will add it to our very next one. As well, don't forget to like and subscribe because then you won't miss out on a video that maybe you've requested or something that you want to know about. Um, we are always here for you to answer any of your questions about these or any other products, any other thing that you need to know to take great care of your dog, whether you're in the salon, going to a dog show, or just trying to get your dog groomed at home in the easiest and most efficient way possible. So thanks again for joining us in our equipment series.